Hello new and beginning modelers. This is Milton Shoup and this video is uh, for new and beginning modelers talking about GMAX and uh, how to get set up and get started. Uh, the objective of this second video is familiarity with the GMAX opening screen, the menu bar, the toolbar, the command panel, viewports, and viewport display tools. Once we get through these topics, then we'll be ready to get down to business. But let's take a minute to get uh, to get familiar with what you're looking at here on the screen. Let's get started with the menu bar. We're not going to use all of these because some of the functions are available elsewhere more conveniently. But we'll go through what we do use or will use during this series to create a uh, an aircraft. So on the file menu. Of course, we'll open our projects here. We'll save our projects here. Uh, on occasion, we'll merge parts, you know, gear or what have you, from other projects we've done to uh, give us a good starting point on the current project. Uh, we'll export to Flight Sim, or we'll export selected, one of those two. And there's some other useful information here if you want to reference your... Uh, project in its totality in terms of size and vertices and polys, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Not a big deal. And then there's the last nine projects we open. So that's what the file menu is all about. In the edit menu, uh, good stuff here, but basically all you'll use here is the select tools, possibly, and edit name selections. And we'll talk about that more later. Tools menu, you can ignore because we'll get at the, those tools in other ways. Group, we'll probably not use. Uh, if we do, it's uh, going to be rare and with caveats. Views, uh, no need to even visit here, so ignore that. Same way with create, same way with modifiers, just ignore them. Same way with animation, ignore. Graph editors, we will create a track view uh, uh, very soon in the future, in future uh, video. And uh, once we have it, we don't have to mess with it anymore. The customized tab, there uh, are things we'll use, uh, and I discussed in the first video, for setup and preferences. We talked about system unit scale, must be this, uh, in meters, etc. And uh, let's see, we talked about files in the previous, doing backups, doing these settings. You can print screen these guys if you want. And uh, viewports, of course, display drivers, choosing a driver, must be one of these two. And once you configure, you have to configure that driver uh, down here at the bottom, checking these boxes and 1024 and 512. And that's, uh, what else here, files we'll get into later. But uh, the key thing here is backups on save. Backups are really important and auto backup setups. Enable that, nine backups every seven minutes, roughly. That gives you about 63 minutes of backups. Very important to save your bacon should you have a problem with GMAX. Um, okay, that's it for that. And then um, also configuring, not configuring, unit setup. Um, unit setup is for use in the this particular project, it's not a global or system setting. You can switch between these as necessary. If you have a, a three view and data that is in feet and inches or decimal inches or fractional inches, uh, decimal feet, whatever, you, know, you can switch and use that or switch back to meters. I personally stick with meters across the board even though I'm in the US. It just keeps it simple. And remember I mentioned on the preferences that the system unit scale is the important one. One unit equals meters, and uh, Flight Sim requires us to be in meters for you to be able to export to it. So this is a must. It's got to stay this way. All right. Uh, in Max Script, uh, there's only one script that we'll be using throughout the series. That's Tag Tool. It helps you with the proper naming conventions for animated objects. We'll get to that later. Uh, the help, the user reference, which is sort of the dictionary and the encyclopedia for GMAX, everything GMAX, everything you wish to know. Uh, 
So if you want to do some light reading, what is GMAX? What's it for? Who uses it? How does it compare to 3DS Max, etc.? Uh, it's interesting stuff. And uh, getting started with GMAX, you can see these three I've visited here. If you want to look at those three, that's fine. It helps you kind of terminology, etc., and, and what's coming in the next video. So have uh, some light reading and maybe helpful to you. Okay, that's the uh, menu bar. Let's talk about the tools toolbar. Uh, some of these you're familiar with. Uh, undo and redo, very important. And if you, you may recall, I talked about uh, undo levels back in the setup of 60. Well, this will allow you to go back 60, uh, 60 times, 60 changes. And sometimes in a project you may uh, make a mistake and select something on the other side of an aircraft or wing and uh, not realize it, move a poly or a vertice around and not discover it until sometime later. Well, this gives you a chance to undo that, at least one way to undo it. So those are your do, uh, undo and redo tools. These are your link tools for creating hi a hierarchy of parts. Fuselage, wing belongs to the fuselage, ailerons to the wing, etc. And the unlink. And this is select, uh, the way you select objects or sub-objects in the scene, and uh, it's, I call it select and do no damage, because it only allows you to select, not to move, not to change. This is a region select tool, which you really don't need. You can use your mouse with a left click and drag and do the same thing. Uh, and there's other options to that, but this you can ignore. Don't, no use for it. Um, this I can't talk about with actually unhiding something and showing you something. So let's uh, unhide all here and then zoom in all extents. Now I can talk about the select objects window. This uh, represents all the objects shown in the viewports here. And they're listed alphabetically as you can see. And a uh, powerful tool that helps you manage what you're working on and what you want around for reference and hide everything else and get it out of your face so you can get to get down to business. So and there's a lot of ways to use this. You can display selected or not. Um, if you uh, a combination of control, shift, control or shift in your left mouse button uh, with the control, you can randomly select objects to and then do, take some action like hide unselected or whatever. Or you can do the group select by selecting one object and then holding down the shift key and selecting the end of the series. So you can use it that way. And then once you have that done, you can hold down control and deselect items that you don't want. You know, it's just fast ways of kind of getting at what you need and hiding everything else. So that's pretty important. The If you use a display subtree and... Uh, a select subtree. That way, if you select one item, the parent item, it selects automatically for you everything, all the children for that parent item. So that's a very handy tool. You'll use it often. All right. Very good. Let's uh, kind of get this out of the way right now. And keep moving. I remember I talked about select and do no damage. Well, when you're ready to get down to work, this is select and move. This allows you to select an object, move it, rotate it, those kinds of things. But you want to use the select, do no damage for most of your selections because if you're not careful, you'll select something and move it with this tool or this tool or this tool. Well, you won't move it, but you'll scale it uh, without realizing it. You may only change it by uh, uh, 400 thousandths of an inch or a meter, rather. And, uh, and not know it until much later and that creates problems. So get in the habit of using the select tool for everything until you're ready to get down to work. Then you can use the select and move. And this is a rotate tool for rotating objects or parts, subparts of objects, sub-objects. This is a scale tool and whenever you see these little arrows at the bottom if you select with the left mouse button and hold down you'll see other options for that particular function. All right. Uh, this is select and manipulate. You can ignore it. I've been 
uh, creating with GMAX for 14 years and never had, never saw a need for it, so you could ignore that. This is a customizable toolbar, by the way, and you can pull off the things that you don't need. That's one of them. Uh, this is your uh, coordinate system. You've got every object has a uh, coordinate or a pivot, and this this uh, determines how that pivot will be displayed for you. Uh, most of the time you'll use view, but if you're animating, you're going to be in local mode where the pivot is likely changed to line up with like the leading edge of a flap or a leading edge of an elevator or a rudder. And uh, otherwise, it's pretty much view. On rare occasions, you'll use the other ones. This tool you can ignore. These are X, Y, Z constraints. And that means when I'm getting ready to move an object using the, its pivot or its uh, gizmo, as you see down here at the bottom, constrain that movement by the selected uh, axis constraint. That's what these are all about. We'll learn more about them. This is a mirror tool. Do not use. Matter of fact, if you customize your toolbar, just remove the mirror tool. This is an array tool. An array tool is simply a copy or clone tool that allows you to predetermine how many copies you need and how you want those copies to be distributed. Uh, for example, if you create a uh, prop blade and you need four of them, you can select this tool, select the prop, or, uh, select the prop blade with its pivot in the proper place and say I want four of them and I want them rotated at 90 degrees and it will clone and rotate that prop blade for you precisely at 90 degrees around a spinner. So that's what that's all about. You can ignore this tool for now. Um, this is another shortcut to the graphic editor track view. And the last two tools are the are have it have to do with textures and materials. So we'll get into that later. Over on the uh, right side is the command panel. There's actually multiple command panels, one for Modify, one for, uh, I'm sorry, one for create, one for modify, one for uh, view and display hierarchies, and one for animating, one for, I'm sorry, this is display and this is utilities. And with each of them, there are uh, subsets that change what is displayed in the drop down command panel here. So it may all look confusing, and of course, you're not familiar with it, but It'll become easy because uh, we're going to get into it one thing at a time as we begin creating objects to build an aircraft. So we'll get into that uh, in the, not, well, maybe in the next video. <coughs> and uh, so down at the bottom of the screen, you've got the animation uh, keyframe scaler. You've got uh, a way to use the keyboard to type in XYZ coordinates. So if you want to move uh, an object to a certain place in the GMAX universe, you can just type it in here and it will move precisely to that location. Um, and these are animation control tools. The last thing I want to talk about are these uh, <coughs> um, viewport control or display tools. But let's talk about the viewports first. We got when you open GMAX, you've got four viewports showing. This is actually configurable. If you go up to Customize, Viewport Configuration and Layout, you have a lot of options to set these up. Frankly, I never use them. I just leave it at the default because when you get down to work, you're going to be in a particular viewport and you want it to fill the screen and you want to get up close and personal to the work you're doing rather than trying to work from afar, which, which is what that feels like. Uh, let me unhide that project again and zoom in. You know, you can't do anything working at this distance. I mean, we're about uh, 70, 80 feet away from this aircraft. So if, if you're working up apart, you need to be up close and personal. You need to be like, I want to be like right here when I'm working on this part or even closer. Okay. So, let's just talk about these viewports and how you manage them. Oops. <clears throat> um, when you do your work, you're going to be working in one of these viewports, but you can also change the way these are displayed. There's a, a 
if you right click on a uh, on the name of the viewport you have options available to you you can view that in wireframe mode uh, you can view it in lit wireframe mode so a lot of ways to view and control and you can also change what that viewport represents top back you know, bottom front user perspective etc show grid or not but all these are keyboard control too so yeah I don't really do much here uh, rarely I'll come in here and switch between that and uh, wireframe for example sometimes you need to get in wireframe mode to be able to to see to create a new poly or something but we'll get into that as we get down the road but we need to uh, Going to get oriented here to the GMAX universe. Uh, <clears throat> these crosshairs represent the center of the GMAX universe, and they all show the same whether you're looking front to back, top to bottom, right to left. And at the center of this, that's represented by 000. If you uh, do the select and move tool, you'll see where your cursor is by looking down at the bottom. It's hard to get uh, right on that zero 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 point, so that's why it's uh, if you have an object selected, important to be able to key in zero 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 down at the bottom because it's really hard. Even when you're when you're zoomed in, it's hard to get your cursor exactly on zero zero zero. I'm, I'm close there, so um, that's why you have these uh, keyboard inputs. Uh, but that's uh, this is the GMAX universe, and uh, when you have objects, there's also object spaces or object universes that just surround that object. But it's important to know that when you set build an aircraft or any object, you're going to be working, you know, in this area of the universe. And I've got a pretty large area. If you look at the XYZ coordinates selected, I'm in meters here, so we're talking 22 to 30 meters. So uh, it's a big universe, and uh, it gets bigger. You can zoom out. Till it's crazy. Uh, the other uh, grid lines you see here, I have set at 10 meters because I want them out of my way and I, I just don't use them. Uh, after 14 years, I just don't have a need to use them as guidelines, but uh, sometimes uh, you might find a reason to use them and that's fine. So that's the kind of the GMAX universe. And uh, let's uh, one more time pull back up. Uh, the the uh, project here just to demonstrate uh, down to the bottom right we've got the zoom tool and you just click and drag with your left mouse button and you zoom in and out and you can zoom wherever your uh, mouse is that's where it zooms to okay and if you hit the E key that uh, zooms full extent so wherever you move this to or away from or rotate it or whatever you can use the E key to zoom back in uh, to bring it up as close as it can give and let you see everything that object has to show. Now there's also a region zoom key that lets you just zoom in to a region. Uh, there's uh, move the scene around. Notice that it's you that's moving, not the scene. Notice the aircraft isn't moving in the, in the GMAX world. So uh, There's a rotate tool. And rotate on axis if you use these handles. Okay, or you can rotate just any way you want by jumping inside, or you can just kind of circle it around outside the circle. So that's kind of how you use these tools. Uh, if you're uh, out in this space, use this uh, one right here to zoom all extents on all viewports. If you're in this space, use this tool here to zoom on a single on the uh, selected viewport or use the E key. Okay, Use the E key. Use the E key. <laughs> or use this button. Same thing. E key button. Alright. So I think that covers what we need to cover in this. Um, we're going to close this out for now and get ready to go to the next video. So thanks for joining in. Comment at the bottom. I appreciate it.